All right, so let's do Fiverr. Now, as you can see, Fiverr is very similar to Upwork, especially if you looked before into something called the project catalog of Upwork, it's the same. I mean, Fiverr were the pioneers, but then Upwork took this, this idea of showcasing the products or the projects in a different way. Um, as far as I know, I've heard that Fiverr started with a concept of $5. That's why it's called Fiverr, which is any service for $5. Like for example, I will eat a burger in 10 seconds for $5. This is how it started. It started as a funny sort of website and it evolved into this giant. Now, working on Fiverr or how to ace it on Fiverr, it's, it's not that difficult. You just need to know a little bit of information here and there. Let's get into the whole process. So in terms of signing up, I said this before, but I'm saying it again. If you qualify for something called Fiverr Pro, let's actually look at it. Fiverr Pro. So for Fiverr Pro, you need to apply. And for, for applying in general, whether Fiverr or Fiverr Pro, the process is quite simple. As you can see, you could join with anything, join with any Gmail or uh, Apple account or Facebook or that, or an email, but that's not the point. Point is it doesn't have that much of a ver verification process as uh, or a filtration process as Upwork, as far as I remember. And uh, the, the signing up is really an easy process, which we will not get into. It's like signing up to any, any website, you know. So you do the sign up and immediately you apply first for the Fiverr Pro. Let's read a little bit more about Fiverr Pro. So how to become Fiverr Pro, which is the first thing I would advise you to give a shot to. Um, as you can see from the link, which is a support ticket on Fiverr Pro, you can become pro in these categories. I was in writing and translation, business writing. So there are things under these categories that you can qualify for. So it's not just graphing and design, that means you have to be a graphic designer. No, you could be an architectural designer, you know, or any sort of designer that falls under these categories. And from there, the benefits, the benefits, the real benefit of Fiverr Pro is that they put you, they give you a badge, which, which puts you, puts you in a different sort of category when it comes to competition. So if someone is buying a service, a random client is just working out and they are looking for a logo designer and they find someone who's Fiverr Pro compared to someone who's not Fiverr Pro, you, this Fiverr Pro person already got an edge. So that's why it's good to, to apply for it. Um, eligibility, as you can see, professional background, higher education, portfolio, previous works and sample. I personally worked, I didn't even uh, submit anything about education or anything impressive about education as well as uh, the professional background. But what I did was I mentioned that I worked for Upwork and worked for there over three years, made over $100,000 and I put some of my professional background of course and my education. That's obvious. But the key here, the education was average. The background, anyone could have done the background. The portfolio, also I put some good portfolio of my projects. What I'm trying to say is that anyone could actually qualify for it if you just sell yourself in a good way. If you showcase yourself as a professional and they buy it, then you're immediately in Fiverr Pro. And once you do that, disregard any other um, any other perks like having your own uh, support or whatever that is. That's customer support, I mean, but that, that's whole. that's really not the point. The point is this badge that you're getting. So give it a shot, get through the application. And as you can see, you can submit your application here with the requirements. And once you do that, you'll see that uh, you have to log into Fiverr first. So you have to create a normal account and then you can start the application. It's long, but it's worth it. All right. So that's the first thing. Let's say you're not Fiverr Pro. Let's say you're normal. You're a normal Fiverr uh, seller, which is not that different. But uh, this is how it's going to look like. You always have a Fiverr buyer and seller, as far as I know. And uh, these are, for example, I earned in September $1,200. Not bad. And this is the dashboard that you see. And for example, these are my gigs. Which, which tells you a little bit of information about them. I created five gigs and there are two pending approval. They're taking quite a long time, which is normal. Uh, I think I'm allowed up to 10. I have no idea how much I'm allowed up to, but 
these were more than enough for me and the the concept of uh concept of fiber okay so let's get into how to really ace it on fiber to ace it on fiber you have to look from a buyer's perspective so i'm gonna switch to buying and when i switch to buying and look into logo design that's the easiest thing like let's say i want a minimalist logo and then you'll see automatically that Fiverr puts some people or there are a lot of people you could be there in time that's not a problem or Fiverr could want to push your products however what matters here as you can see it's not Jackie Balboa it's the logo they design they always showcase it like this and most of the time these things are very are very conventional. I've seen this, for example, template of putting some putting some logo on a on a mock-up like that. It's it's just that's not there's nothing special about it. I've seen this a lot of times. You've probably seen it also a lot of times. Similarly, this is also similar, and it's not really what I would be looking for. However, they have a lot of sales, so it works for them. But if you really want to stand out with something different, I like this guy, for example. I mean, at the first picture, at least. This I hate because it's a very famous mock-up. Uh, what I did is I put myself a video. So if I look at my gig, you'll find that, let's say, for example, this one, this had a lot of... Uh, this had a lot of uh, interaction. Immediately, I put a video of me speaking. So that's step number one. When people are looking at the Fiverr gigs and they find a person um, speaking, then they would automatically connect with that person. And bam, you already you already identified yourself amongst the competition as a person who is capable of showcasing themselves, which is a super strong edge when it comes to Fiverr because. Fiverr compared to Upwork has a big spam sort of reputation. There's a lot of spam things and you can see a lot of people on the internet just trying to buy things on uh, uh, Fiverr just to prove that there are scams or they're not scams and so on. So the video is perfect. It really doesn't matter what I say here. Here I just introduced myself or said something about pitch decks and business plans. Just spoke and look at the look into the camera and just spoke. The whole idea is just to, to establish yourself as a person. And for my content, I immediately put a simple mock-up and I put one of my slides. So this is one of my slides. I, of course, changed the content a little bit because of non-disclosure um, so non agreements. But this is how it looks like. And it's simple and it's straightforward. I, again, this also mock-up is it's quite clean. And that's what you're looking for. The keyword here is clean. And mock-ups compared to anything in your gig are the most important thing. Because when people are surfing through uh, Fiverr, the first thing they're gonna see is the mock-up. And when they see a stretched out images like this, and most of images are stretched out somehow, it's something in, in Fiverr, you have to understand. So try to upload the exact dimension so that they wouldn't stretch out, stretch out a bit, like, like this one. It's a little bit stretched out, I see. And uh, this is also a little bit stretched out. As you can see, the circle is not really circular. And that kills it a little bit, you know what I mean? And the, the whole idea is when I surf through these things, my eye is automatically not even catching the text, it's catching the image. So your image is your first point of sale. You need to attract them. Read a little bit more about color psychology, and this is why I put a little bit of orange, because red is something that attracts attention, or orange is a little bit as well something that attracts attention. So I'm trying to grasp their image. Blue is something also, you, you can read a lot about color psychology, how each what each color means, and from there conduct uh, conduct a lot of experiments on different gigs that you have to see which branding you want to send. What, what do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them that I want you to feel safe, I want you to, to buy this gig right now, etc. Putting a face is always a good idea compared to anything else. Again, because of the spam thing. Uh, now, pricing-wise, it's true that Fiverr uh, that fi that Fiverr prefers or the market of Fiverr is a cheap one. I thought of that, but I did sell services there for $2,500. Um, some people pay expensively and some people pay cheaply. Some people want a cheap product. Some people want a more expensive product. That's absolutely normal in all sort of freelancing websites. So what you could do is make it a little bit dynamic. Get your minimal, minimal uh, price. So this is starting at 100. I will design a one pager. Let's look at it. Uh, 
the key here is to play with the standard and the premium. So the premium is 500. So the pricing he is going to try to push to sell people for $500 to sell to people this gig for $500. And he has very strong clients amongst uh, his clients. I'm not really sure if this is actually true or if anyone could put their clients. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just, you know, you could just add and say that you were you worked with Coca-Cola or do they have to have a Fiverr account and they have to have approached you. So that's one thing. At pricing wise, if you start with 100, that's okay. If you start with, I sometimes, some of my gigs started with 300, some of my gigs started with 500, some of them started with more, with 1000. So it's really depending on your niche, which you're gonna choose. And accordingly, you're gonna put the pricing.